Hi students, the purpose of this video is to give you a little bit of insight into the history of the atmosphere. So the how has the atmosphere of Earth evolved over time? Um, it's estimated that the Earth is roughly 4.5, 4.6 billion years old. And you can see on the graph that I'm presenting here that uh, we have that timeline here up into the present where we mostly have oxygen and nitrogen that compose our current atmosphere. So how did we get here? Because as you can see, there's been some changes over time. And uh, before we even start this, I just want to remind you that uh, we don't have direct samples um, from 4, million, 4 billion years ago. Uh, so how do we know all this stuff? And a lot of it comes from uh, rock samples and how the atmosphere might have, um, how, how the chemistry of the air in the atmosphere and rocks might have worked together. And that's just one piece of this big puzzle. So let's go through um, just this timeline and kind of see what's happened over time in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, first of all, in the early formation of the Earth, you have to think uh, it was very hot when the Earth formed, uh, and there were a whole bunch of different pieces of rock and gas and all kinds of stuff floating in the orbit where the Earth actually formed uh, around the Sun. Um, two of the main gases that are in the entire universe are helium and hydrogen, and so you see these right here are fairly abundant in the first atmosphere, uh, but those gases are very light, and uh, because the Earth doesn't have a super strong gravitational pull, and because of the heat involved in the early Earth, um, it's, it's hypothesized or theorized that most of these gases quickly boiled off into the universe uh, around us, into the into space, basically. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of ammonia and methane in the early atmosphere, and there's a couple of theories about where those came from. Um, one of the things that's important to know is that during this time period of the, the early formation of the Earth, um, there were lots of comets and asteroids and bits of rock all floating around, and all of that debris, uh, those things can collide into the Earth, and those are called bolides. And when those bolides or, or those pieces collide into Earth, they can bring things to Earth and they can also cause chemical reactions. So scientists think that a lot of the methane, which is NH, I'm sorry, which is CH4 and ammonia and some water and carbon dioxide all came from large objects colliding with the Earth. Um, for example, comets have a lot of ammonia in them, and uh, that's a theory about how we got ammonia in the atmosphere. You'll notice over um, the 0.7, or you just want to say maybe a, a 1 billion year period, that slowly decreased. There's a lot of chemistry that goes on with the light from the sun and other components in the atmosphere that uh, can change ammonia, for example, to N2, which is nitrogen gas, one of our most abundant gases in the atmosphere currently. Um, and that methane also degrades over time through multiple chemical processes. So um, another important process that's going on in the early Earth that it's very hot and it's slowly cooling off. So a lot of the thing, a lot of the heat that's residual or remaining is slowly moving out away from the Earth into space, just into space around the Earth. Um, as it cools off, we have a, a phenomenon called outgassing. And outgassing is basically volcanic activity. It's where um, materials from deeper in the Earth's mantle, like we learned about, are extruded or pushed up to the surface of the Earth, and that can bring up all kinds of stuff with it. And so in that process of outgassing, um, again, we get a lot of water vapor, carbon dioxide, some methane, and other compounds added to the Earth. So here you go. Here's the large peak in the water vapor as that outgassing continues, and also the carbon dioxide peaking here as the outgassing continues. Now, what happened to the water vapor here? We see it slowly start to decline. Well, as you guys know, as water vapor starts to cool off, it actually condenses and forms liquid water. And so it's theorized that as the Earth cooled enough, water vapor actually began to condense and form our oceans. And so we get a steep decrease of water vapor in the atmosphere as a gas, and because now it's becoming water as our large oceans. 
Now, an interesting uh, piece that's connected to that is uh, carbon dioxide, as we've also discussed in our hydrosphere unit. Carbon dioxide is uh, definitely dissolved into aqueous or water environments. So as those oceans form and we get larger and larger bodies of water, carbon dioxide dissolves into those bodies of water. It's a really good thing for us that we have so much water in our on our planet and then a lot of that water vapor condensed into uh, the oceans because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and if we had more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere it would actually retain or keep uh, more heat in the atmosphere and our planet would be too hot to be uh, livable. So this uh, 20 30 percent carbon dioxide where it peaked would create a very very hot atmosphere for us and we would not be able to able to survive. Um, Venus is a really good example of this. Venus does not have uh, large bodies of water for carbon dioxide to absorb into and so we have large amounts of carbon dioxide on Venus and that creates um, a very strong greenhouse uh, effect. So what are some other things happening in here? We, we lose a lot of that carbon dioxide and water vapor out of the atmosphere. Around this time, two billion-ish years ago, um, this is a really key change in the composition of our atmosphere. Uh, life begins to evolve somewhere in here, all right? About 2.7, 2.8 billion years ago, the first cyanobacteria uh, evolve. And those bacteria start to do photosynthesis. And as you know, photosynthesis produces oxygen gas. Now, this creates what we call our first oxidation event, where we actually start to see oxygen in the um, in the atmosphere. Now, how do we know there was oxygen in the atmosphere? Well, oxygen oxidizes iron, and we know that there's a lot of iron in the crust of the earth and the mantle, and that iron reacts and creates reddish color iron oxide. So anytime we had iron uh, oxygen in the atmosphere, we know that we probably uh, oh, sorry, anytime we had uh, reddish colored rocks and we can date those rocks, then we can assume that there was oxygen in the atmosphere or in the water at that time. Um, so a lot of these uh, cyanobacteria are producing oxygen gas. Now a lot of this oxygen gas at first, it's a very gradual climb. And the reason for that is that a lot of the oxygen gas combines with um, iron that's dissolved in the oceans from all this water vapor that condensed over here. So as that oxygen and iron combine, they form a precipitate called iron oxide, which is you know as rust, and that falls to the bottom of the ocean. And we get these banded iron formations which are very pretty and they are also our main source of iron for all of the things we use iron for on earth banded iron formations now as soon as the ox the, all, most of the iron was used up in this chemical reaction our second great oxidation event occurs a really key thing had to happen around this time for our second great input of oxygen and that was the formation of the ozone layer um, ultraviolet light penetrates through the atmosphere and it gets all the way to the earth and it can damage uh, living uh, life. So it can damage DNA, cause cancers, um, break down biological molecules, and as that happens it kills life on earth. So fortunately sometime in here the ozone formed up in the stratosphere which you've also learned about and that was a key key development in the uh, in the whole process of the development of the atmosphere. That's where our second great oxidation event occurred around two and a half billion years ago. This timeline's a little different, um, but we started to see a great increase because life began to flourish since the ozone layer formed. More life was able to move onto land. We get a whole lot more photosynthesis going on and our oxygen levels just explode and we get very high amounts of oxygen released into the atmosphere. Uh, so that kind of brings us to where we are today. Uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor are in very small amounts in the atmosphere. We have very little hydrogen, helium, ammonia, and methane in the atmosphere. We have very high amount of nitrogen, which is a very stable gas, N2, and that's a, about 80-ish um, percent of our atmosphere is nitrogen gas and about 20-ish percent 
is O2 or oxygen gas. You can see a few little peaks and dips in here and scientists speculate why all of these happen. They've got lots of different theories and there's um, currently lots of research to try to prove all of these theories and make sure that they fit the models that we currently know that exist. So that's a short history of the different gases that exist in the Earth's atmosphere over time.